John, I just recalled that we were living here on Cordona, in a manor. And there was a policeman. Really? What else do you remember? What happened to our mother? The memory was vague, a, a mere flash. I have to find our house. Absolutely. Let's do it. Excuse me, just one question. I usually have an answer for everything, but not for this. I'm done with the archives for now. Can I help you with anything else? As a matter of fact, you can. The thing is, our chief inspector has vanished, as if we weren't undermanned enough as it is. Wait, what do you mean, vanished? Gone missing on a case. Shady business, but that's besides the point. See that board? Pending cases are posted there for any available officers to investigate. I would take them myself, except that I've been told to work the reception desk, like some clerk. Yes, we're that short-handed. I understand your predicament, but what does any of it have to do with me? I may be available, but I'm certainly not an officer. Oh, don't worry about it. Consider yourself a temporary one-man independent police force. That's a bit of a mouthful. There's just one small, minor, basic formality. You'll need to complete our physical training course. Easy. Well, I'm not one to balk at a spot of exercise. What must I do? That's the spirit. Sergeant Ermy will show you the ropes. Follow me. So, you're a newcomer. We must be desperate to ask untrained civilians for help. You're lucky to have a well-trained civilian with a brand new auto pistol in his arsenal. An automatic? A bit of a braggart, aren't you? Are you trying to test me already? That is why you're here, boy. I need to verify your skills before I can allow you to catch criminals. The first targets are in the next room. You know what to do with them. I'll join you in a while to see the results. Concentrate, Sherry. You need to hit every target to show the sergeant how we do it. Hooray! Proceed to the next room. Meanwhile, I'll fill out the paper. Come on, Sherry. It's just like in childhood. Steady, Sherry. Steady. And... Go! My favourite mannequins for attack. Let's strike them ninja style. Aim for where you might take advantage and don't forget the environment. Uh-oh, Sherry. Not a nice shot. You could have killed the fella if he was alive. Aim for where you might get an advantage. I could do this all day. Our enemies might be stronger than us, but we rely on our wits. Shoot off their armour. Hooray! Alright, let's move on, Sherry. If you stand here and use your snuffbox on them, you can definitely overcome them, Sherry. It's all calculated. Sherry, you've guessed that you can't use the powder when he has a helmet. I've been sending you brain signals. Helpful advice, John. I would never have guessed. 
Good job, new boy. Well, I'm almost finished with the paperwork. Let's talk about your results. Well, I must say your results aren't as bad as I feared. Perhaps you're not completely hopeless, but true combat is quite different from shooting stationary targets. I'll handle it just as easily. Well, that's what we're going to find out. Now, we'll test you against our men. Your task is to detain them, not to kill them. So don't go shooting anyone in the eye. That goes for in the field as well. Even though you'll be working with the police department, that doesn't mean you have a license to kill. Here, take these. They are blank rounds. So, are you ready? Always ready. Then let's get cracking. Worried? Not at all. I can hit them all with one shot. Good luck, Sherry. And remember, the surroundings are your playground. I'm coming. I couldn't miss the party. It won't work this way. I'm coming. Take a rest, my friend. The snuff's ready. Overcome him, duck. I'm coming for you. Too simple. I'm coming. Time to knock this guy out. Take a rest, my friend. Give him the pepper snuff. That's enough. You've proved yourself. Congratulations on the arrests. I can't believe you did so well with the close combat. I did tell you that I'm well trained. Well, do the same on the street, and you'll be well rewarded for every arrest you make. Here is your certificate. You are now an authorized crime scene consultant. Well, it's now your duty to make this city a safer place. Cordona won't ever forget it, but at the same time, it will never remember. I'll tell Stark all the necessary details about your successful certification. Congratulations. Now you're a certified crime scene consultant. Congratulations. Thank you, my friend. Now, shall we head for Stonewood Manor? Don't know. You have the whole island to investigate. It's all up to Could you. Could you help me? A solid question, sir, but I don't have the answer.
Nothing new for you, my Can I ask you a question? We cry for help, you do nothing. So when you ask for help, why should we speak? Ow. Nothing new for you, my fight. Are you able to help me? You shouldn't have left your mansion. You won't get any answers from me. May I ask you something? Doesn't remind me of anything. Someone else can help better, sir. Time to check your who, what and what, Sherry. Who are you asking about what... Is this familiar to you? I don't want my friends to see me talking to a spile money bag. Are you able to help me? Doesn't remind me of anything. Someone else can help better, sir. Time to check your who, what and what, Sherry. Who are you asking about what and dressed as what? Help me, please. Don't be angry with me, sir, but I don't know. Hello. Do you know anything about this? Doesn't remind me of anything. Someone else can help better, sir. Everyone's looking at us, Sherry. You sure you know what you're doing? Are you able to help me? Mr. Fancy Claus won't find any answers here.
Can you satisfy my curiosity? I'm very sorry, sir, but I can't help you. Nothing new for you, I'm afraid. Can I ask you a question? It's not something I know, sir. Someone else might know more. May I ask you something? It's funny when someone like you asks someone like me for help. My new neighbor is awful. Are you able to help me? A solid question, sir, but I don't have the answer. Oh, I am bored. Call me when you find the answer. Is this familiar to you? No, sir. I won't talk to you. Are you able to help me? I rather bite a snake than talk to you. This isn't working. You might need a different tack. Do you know anything about this? I'm very sorry, sir, but I can't help you. May I ask you something? So you think if you have money, we should bow to your whims? No, sir. Could you help me? There is no amount of money that would make me talk. Hey, Sherry!
There's post After reading here. that, I am even less it eager to return home than before. Let's investigate our manor. That's the micro. There she is. Our old manor. It's smaller than I remember. You were a couple of feet shorter back then, Sherry. Or maybe it's bigger on the inside. Look at the ash all over the door. I don't recall hearing of a fire. We don't have to stay here. You can afford another night or two at the hotel. Hmm. It's stuck. Oh well, let's just head back. They probably haven't even stripped our room yet. Come on. <clears throat> Must be locked. Move aside. Let me have a go. Seems fine to me, Sherry. This barrier, perhaps it's mental, not physical. Or perhaps the rest of us are simply constrained by reality, John. I wonder if there's a key secreted somewhere in the garden. Take a look around, Sherlock. I'm sure you'll discover something. I did not expect these to still be here. It was enjoyable to practice using real handcuffs to make an arrest. An irreplaceable tool for catching a thief. Hey, that's Wooden Joe. He was always the best at playing criminals. And this must be the reason our suspect was apprehended. Wood and glass are very precious. Funny. Wooden Joe reminds me of the trouble we once got in with the police. Do you remember, John? Hmm, somewhat. Maybe we can recall more details. A manor all to ourselves. Can you believe it, Sherry? I have so many ideas. Why does this barn give me such an unpleasant feeling? Oh, I know. It's because Mycroft used an axe to shoo you out of here. It scarred you for life, but I enjoyed it. Hey, that's Wooden Joe. He was always the best at playing criminals.
a manor all to ourselves. Can you believe it, Sherry? I have so many ideas. A manor all to ourselves. Can you believe it, Sherry? I have so many ideas. The policeman brought us both home, John. That's why he was here. I'm pretty sure he brought something else with him, too. Do you remember what it was? I bet it was our reward. No, we were not so lucky. It was a set of lockpicks that we had used to sneak into someone's house. That's why we were arrested. Did someone come out to investigate all the commotion? It was Mycroft. He smoothed things over and convinced the policeman not to press charges. The officer left and never returned. But we had to endure a serious talking to from my brother. Mycroft wasn't happy about the fact that we were arrested. It felt like he lectured us for hours. Did we give him something afterwards, Sherry? Oh, yes. Yes, now I remember. It was a letter. That's why we snuck into the house. Mycroft asked us to. He wasn't angry we stole, but that we got caught. Ah, oh, that's right. It must have been only a couple of months after we moved to Cordona. Ugh. Oh. The good old days. Whoa. How very odd. It appears that memory stood between me and the manor. It, it's as if my mind palace had seeped into the real world. This deserves further investigation. Perhaps there's more to discover inside. As long as there is a comfortable place to put my feet up, I'll be happy. Maybe a chaise long. Aha. In we go. Home sweet home, Sherry. And I was wondering why it's so empty in here. There may be a another one. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. One of the first things I saw when entering this house as a child. It's like... Deja vu. Mycroft's umbrella. The only outgoing thing in his wardrobe. Hey, this is the luggage we brought from London, isn't it? Another memory incoming, Sherry. Strange. I struggle to recall anything about the day we moved in. The only detail I'm sure of is that it was raining early that morning. Something did happen that day, but no one can tell us the details. How can that be? Agreed. It's rather suspicious. Another one. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. This trip was a challenge for our mother. I tried to help her. Our mother brought a slew of belongings with her. She 
refused to leave a single thing in London. There was always a hat on our stand, but I'm sure it did not belong to Mycroft. Do you feel it? Is it the air shimmering, or is it my imagination? You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. Your neighbors will be told that Mrs. Holmes is suffering from tuberculosis. It is common to move closer to the sea in such cases. Thank you, Dr. Richter. No, Sherlock, step away from her. Upstairs, go to your room. Lean on me, Mother. Take your time. Actually, I never heard her coughing. I remember now. I feel dizzy. It's stuffy in here, isn't it? John, are you all right? I'll be okay in a minute. <clears throat> How about we uh, find our room in the meantime? Let's do it, Sherlock. I remember how angry Mycroft was about these marks. He called it a frivolous, childish endeavor. I heard footsteps upstairs a second ago. Wait, do we have an attic here? Another one. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. I think our family portrait used to hang here. Look at this. It's like traveling 10 years into the past with a single step. Coal what dust from Miner's well. End, sandy dirt from the old city. We scoured the island top to bottom for these soil samples. The first chemical laboratory I ever made. I almost miss its elegant simplicity. Look at this, John. Remember how desperately I wanted to learn the violin? I never had a proper opportunity. Such a shame. I always hated the rule about being silent in this place. Interesting. What's that over there? This doorknob has a cross-shaped end. Too intricate to be merely a handle. You know what? That definitely looks like a key. Let's poke around and see if we can find any secrets. The only fiction book on my table. I can still hear my mother reading it to me. So many pleasant evenings were spent here with the Encyclopedia Americana. A magnificent tool made for a spurious purpose, staring into the sky. I've definitely found a better use for it. You mean, for spying on people? Need to repeat this one day, but with bullets. Oh, these must be the notes of my earliest observations. We wanted to locate a particular dog we'd spotted, and we met it, didn't we? I'll never forget how challenging it was to obtain this simple sketch. 
Oh, oh, it reminds me of our neighbour. He had the same balloon in his yard, only bigger. Do you remember? Yes. We visited him several times while living here. Can I believe all my toys are still here? Hey, they were not just yours. They were half mine too. An artifact from Palau carved out a bone and claimed to be 300 years old. My mother proved it was a fake. My very favorite plaything. It was the perfect pirate treasure. This time I was first to pick beds. This one's mine now. Nah, doesn't fit here. The first chemical laboratory I ever made. I almost miss its elegant simplicity. Perfect match. My small archive of crime clippings. Maybe I should pick up this habit again. Made of cherry wood, father's favorite. Still has a faint odor of tobacco, one of the few things on this island that smell like home. I knew you'd find it in no time. This time I was first to pick beds. This one is mine now. Another one. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. Wasn't that neighbor missing a finger? That does sound vaguely familiar. Wasn't his name, uh, Theodore? Theodore Gilden, perhaps? It's I heard footsteps upstairs a second ago. Wait, do we have an attic here? Another one. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. I heard footsteps upstairs a second ago. Wait, do we have an attic here? Another one. There must be something... Behind it, I can feel it. A 
another one. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. That wretch Goliath would murder us all. Mark my words. Oof, a contortionist you were not. Disjointed vertebrae. Difficult to say if it was a way to start or finish him off. Belt from a dressing gown. Curious. A kneecap reduced to splinters. He was certainly under pressure. An amount of attention that most can only dream of. Didn't we get to fly in it as children? I doubt it could hold my weight today. He was certainly under pressure. Poke the elephant with this. Really, people are hopeless. A strong pull broke this leash. A pool of blood and saliva, possibly as a result of impact. Sherlock, take a picture of the footprint. It's valuable evidence.
This photograph can help us find the old article about the elephants. The front page was fascinating. It was hard to believe as a child. True. We may need it in our investigation. This is quite comfy. This is quite comfy. Destruction and trampled ground. <laughs> he was certainly under pressure. This is quite comfy. <sighs> he was certainly under pressure. Disjointed vertebrae. Difficult to say if it was a way to start or finish him off. A missing pinky, middle-aged. It's none other than Theodore Gilder. Oh boy, Sherlock. Another death means another question. And we... You shall answer the question. It's far too interesting to give it up to the police. He was certainly under pressure.
whole gas tank, enough to pump up an airship. A sailor's knife useful for cutting wet and thick ropes. It's seen a lot of use, the blade is worn from grinding. Fresh signs of impact. A rough landing led to an altercation with this shed. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. 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 You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate.
You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. In a fit of rage, the elephant broke the chain and threw its victim on the ground with a fierce power. Escaping the scene, it pulled the body with it, but dropped it at the gate. At least some of this was witnessed by a third party who was hurled against the shed. The elephant can't have gone too far, I can still track it. Well, suppose you find it. Then what? Push it all the way back to the manor? Hog Heaven. <sighs> he was certainly under pressure. <sighs> Destruction and trampled ground. Destruction and trampled ground.
as if they were struck by a battering ram. I wonder how we managed not to hear any of this. Can I ask you a question? That's a question I can answer. Do you know anything about this? I'm so sorry. I can't help you, sir. Are you able to help me? Oh, sir, I'm afraid I don't know about that. Time to check your who, what and what, Sherry. Who are you asking about as what As if they were struck by a battering ram. Can you satisfy my curiosity? I have a question too. Who looks an idiot in his fancy clothes? It's you. May I ask for your assistance? Uh, don't take it personally, sir. Uh, but I know nothing about this. This isn't working. You might need a different tack. Can I ask you a question? Mr. Fancy Claus won't find any answers here. The elephant barged into this cart of olive oil. What if we're lucky and he slipped and fell somewhere along the way? Okay, hear me out. If an elephant falls in the forest and there's no one around to... John, no. Oh, you're such a killjoy. Strange. It was hung with care.
The game has escaped us for now. We'll find a solution to the elephant problem later. Hog Heaven. Oh, why do I get the worst jobs? This young lady has a childish interest for her age. Gosh, what a mansion. I can always recognize the spirit of a true artist. You! Who are you? My name is Sherlock Holmes. Theodore Gildon was... Did you kill him? Did you kill the elephant? It's not in the yard anymore. It escaped into the forest. You can't let it go. What if it returns? I highly doubt that, miss. Imogen Gildon. Please, I beg of you. Find that dreadful beast that killed my father. I suppose we do need to learn what happened. Can you tell me what happened? From the very start. I was here. So I didn't see how it began. My father visits the enclosure every morning to wake up Goliath. Today, I heard the elephant scream. I've never heard such a horrifying sound. My heart stopped. I knew something was wrong. I looked through my window and saw how it... How it lifted my father up by his neck. I rushed downstairs. I saw it dragging my father as if he were a doll. I threw stones at it. It dropped my father's body and charged outside, screaming. Its roar was almost human. I was frightened, so I ran inside and hid here. That is a terrifying experience, Miss Gildon. I'm sorry you had to go through it. Thank you. Goliath must be caught, Mr. Holmes. Well, thank you for the information, Miss Gildon. I did have some questions for your father. Perhaps you might help me with them? I wasn't privy to much of my father's life. And it's very hard to think of anything at all with Goliath still loose. Please, Mr. Holmes. Very well. Do you mind if I ask you more questions if I find anything that might help? Anything to catch that monster! I'm afraid I can't add anything useful. I have nothing to say about this. Had Goliath been aggressive before? It's dangerous, but it was never aggressive near my father. My father would do anything for Goliath. All the elephant had to do was clap its ears. You envied him, the elephant, I mean. Our house is called the House of Ivory. I've heard some people refer to me as the Ivory Girl, and my room stinks of the animal, as if it's me who lives in a pen and not Goliath. It's not envy, Mr. Holmes. It's just incredibly difficult to live like this. Did you observe anyone else in the yard? Any of your servants, perhaps? Servants? Do you imagine that we would have any with Goliath? No one wishes to work in this house, even for double pay. I didn't see anyone else. Only my father and that diabolical beast. 
Miss Gildon, I was on this island ten years ago, and your father knew my mother. I believe I even had the opportunity to ride that balloon outside, but I do not recall seeing you. I lived at my late mother's in Sheffield at the time. I'm in no spirit to reminisce right now. The elephant is out there. You've never heard the name Violet Holmes before? Perhaps your father. Please, Mr. Holmes, with that beast roaming free, I can't think of anything. Very well. She packed as much as she could carry. False idols. Oh, sounds utterly dreary. So idyllic. Enjoy your happily ever after before it stales. Oh, the same dull poses on all romantic photographs. Hey, Sherry. We need to talk. You found false idols. We need to find the remaining two. What does bazooka even mean? Would this paper be good for anything but blowing one's nose on? They're not rubbish, Sherry. There's something more. I'm serious. Very well. I doubt it'll be worth it, but I will find them for you, John. You'll thank me later. They're some of the most imaginative books I've ever read. What did you say? Speaking aloud helps me think. A commendable effort to barricade the windows. How can you read something like this? It's hard to swallow, and that's not due to the hard cover. You're hardly serious. Any library without Nabe and Laura is incomplete. If you can read, then these books are an absolute must. Love and adventure. They're about life. Oh, I wasn't aware that exploding pyramids were a part of daily life on Cordona. You haven't seen life, so you might try reading about it at least. I found this. Who's this young lad next to you, your faithful knight? Paul. He's my pirate. He's not really a pirate. I just call him that. It probably sounds very silly. Your secret is safe in my hands. Does Paul work somewhere? What is his surname? His name is Paul Perks. He and his yacht Whirlpool are the champions of the Salacia Yacht Club. He sails there. I'll show you where it is on the map if you need to meet him. A yachting champion? Oh, well, that will be a first. I prefer dry land. And so does my suit. These bags of yours, it looks as if you've packed your entire room. Were you planning on going somewhere? My partner and I... We wanted a change. A fresh start abroad. But now I have to stay here. Here, an orphan. I can't think of anything else right now. Who's a cute bird? Who's a cute bird? I can't think of anything else right now. Nicest spot in the room. Mr. Gildon spent hours of his life right here. Staring at an elephant's backside. Whoa, looks eccentric and smells eccentric. Oh, the pungent stench of an animal. Did Theodore seek some pink elephants with this? I think Miss Gildon has barely matured. A relatively functional choice to replace the finger.
think they were closer than you and me, John? I'm hurt. What's so special about this place? Another elephant? <laughs> a partnership annulled with a single stroke of a pen. Catchy title. I should take a photograph of the plans. I don't want to carry them around. His second child, an apparent son and heir, I'd say. Mother. It's nice to see her young and smiling. From before Mycroft was born, our family loves to prod at the past. Holmes's desire to rake up the past is hereditary. Quite the spectrum. From the history of the Roman Empire to conspiracy theories of the French Revolution. I have nothing to say about this. A. Swift, is this name familiar to you? Your father had it removed from this plan. Oh, that's Arthur Swift. I've seen him a couple of times here. He works with my father in the old city, digging up something ancient. He is an archaeologist? That's the word, yes. But to be truthful, I really don't think Mr. Swift is fit to be one. I've just learnt a lot about archaeology from my favourite book series. Oh, they are page-turners. Inspirational, I'm sure, but would you happen to know where this Mr. Swift might be found? I don't. But perhaps you can find out somewhere. My father's work with him is all official. Lots of boring legal papers with signatures and stuff. And, uh, which part of the elephant is in here? It's quite pungent. Oh, that. It's elephant sweat. Father believed that it might replace traditional amber grease. Well, that's true entrepreneur spirit. The monster is free! Gosh, what a mansion!
all the newspapers are sold out. Is this familiar to you? That's a question I can answer. Excuse me, just one question. I can't help you with that, sir. Excuse me, just one question. Ex excuse me, what? I'm not sure I know. Time to check your who, what and what, Sherry. Who are you asking about what and dressed as what? Can I ask you a question? Apologies, sir, but I've never heard of it. Help me, please. I can't help you with that, sir. Can I ask you a question? I would never deny you, sir, but I know nothing about this. Are you able to help me? Oh, sir, I'm afraid I don't know about that. This isn't working. You might need a different tack. Champions Whirlpool, pools bread and butter. A foghorn to navigate and warn others at sea. You should have a warning to cover your ears. We can become pirates and show them what should be stored in here. Tales of hatred. I suppose there is something for everyone, including champions. Who knew archaeology could be so exciting? Exciting is certainly a word. We can become pirates and show them what should be stored in here. Bloodied bandages. Has someone been hurt? Where would a champion hide a key?
We can become pirates and show them what should be stored in here. I hope Paul is more skilled at yachting than he is at hiding keys. Bloodied bandages. To earn big, you have to spend big. Mr. Gildon wasn't afraid to get his hands dirty. Old betting slips. Paul always bets on Whirlpool. One victory after another. An interesting place for a message to a champion. Additional earnings to sweeten the victory. A box full of darts. Each has a needle and can be loaded with drugs. An expensive set of tools for woodwork. An amateur wouldn't know how to use these. Shipbuilding, shipwrights tricks, sail weaving. Too ordinary a room for a champion. There's no incentive to put in any effort. Bloodied bandages. Too ordinary a room for a champion. There's no incentive to put in any effort. Bloodied bandages. Can I ask you a question? I can't help you with that, sir. Excuse me, just one question. I can't help you with that, sir.
hello. We can become pirates and show them what should be stored. Too ordinary a room for a champion. There's no incentive to put in any effort. Bloodied bandages. Too ordinary a room for a champion. There's no incentive to put bloody bandages. don't have any thoughts on this. Are you aware that Paul smuggles drugs for a dangerous gang? Mr. Holmes, I've already told you. I call him a pirate in play. He's not an actual pirate. He's a champion and a brave gentleman, not a thug. Let us agree to disagree on that. But don't be surprised if one of his clients knocks on your door. Have you seen what your father sent to Paul? This is despicable. My father was never a gentleman, but this crosses the line. I knew that father wasn't fond of Paul, but this... This is just awful. If only he could have seen how good Paul he is to me. It's chilling to think the monster is free!
stop the presses. Who is Cordona's handsome stranger? Or knows Baggerspun's local life? Wait, uh, no. Foppish foreigner hides dark past. I, uh, um... Oh, you've made quite the impression already, Mr. Holmes. You care to tell your side of the story? I am quite certain I have no idea as to what you refer, and I am further certain I have no interest in indulging your gossip. Gossip? The truth will come out, but will only be heard if told well. Scandal, daring do, romance... These are the tools of every good journalist. Nothing travels faster or lasts longer than a great story. Young man, your tale will be told with or without you. My readers demand it. You already knew my name and seem aware of my doings here in Cordona. I presume this newspaper is your little endeavor? Yasmin Sertel, editor-in-chief of the Cordona Chronicle. Advocate of the free press, voice of the people, scourge of the silk stocking. Charmed, I'm sure. As an advocate of the free press, I trust you'll permit me to consult your archives? There are gaps in my knowledge of Cordona. Oh, so my work does have merit. Well, I think we can strike a bargain. I shall provide you access, and you let me keep writing about your exploits. So be it. Brooding bachelor builds bridges. Now that's character development. I guess I owe you my gratitude. What can I say? I've always enjoyed working with the homes. They whisper such interesting things. Help me, please. Oh, I'm sorry, but that's beyond my knowledge. I'll be right here. Could you help me? Oh, I'm sorry, but that's beyond my knowledge.
I am watching you closely, Mr. Holmes. Can you satisfy my curiosity? I cannot be of help, sir. Someone else might know better. All the newspapers are sold out. He's even put in a post. Fresh your interior. Pick what you like. Could you help me? My family is starving because of people like you. Go away. My goods will brighten up your house. Enjoy your purchase. He is even being put in it. Does it look remotely familiar to you? Should it? Concentrate, Sherry. Are you lost, sir? Not at all. I'm right where I need to be. I'm Sherlock Holmes, by the way. Ursula Oni, the chief archivist. How can I help you exactly? I need to take a look at the history of Cordona and its islanders to retrieve some, hopefully, useful information. Your brother Mycroft told me that you were direct, and now that we've met, I can see that is true. Someone in our family has to balance the evasive nature of my brother. Well, may I use the city archives? You may, of course. But in return, perhaps dinner? That's a high price to pay for looking at your archives. <laughs> I was teasing you. Pay no attention to me. I'm curious, how did Mycroft recruit you? I doubt you're a field agent. I imagine you work with intelligence. That's correct. Your brother noticed me when I tracked down a spy at the archives. That's how our cooperation began. And you? Did Mycroft force you into this? Not at all. We simply have a mutual interest in someone. Or something. Of course. A fruitful and willing collaboration, I'm sure. Well, I'm his younger brother. I have to accept the consequences of being a close relative of an official figure. I suppose, in a way, we are colleagues, Mr. Holmes. 
In the remotest way possible, Miss Oni. With your love for archives, you would have made the perfect bureaucrat. Don't pass by. Let's pick something that suits you. A good choice. A good choice indeed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Can you satisfy my curiosity? Why don't you go and ask your rich friends? Don't pass by. Welcome. Welcome. I remember the monument. Cordona's legendary pirate, the Robin Hood of the place. Do you recall it, John? From day to night. No, I don't I wonder stand. If May I ask for your assistance? Mr. Fancy Claus won't find any answers here.
Do you know anything about this? Hmm, interesting. But I've never heard of it. From day to night... Is this familiar to you? That's new to me. There is nothing I can tell you. Everyone's looking at us, Sherry. Could you Should help me? Know what you That's new to me. From day there to night, I Aiden stands you. there, recruiting non-rebellious workers for the... Can I ask you a question? My friend, I know nothing. I'm sorry. Time to check your who, what and what. Is this familiar to you? Who you are asking oh, my about what and dress is what? Mm -hmm. From day to night, I don't stand. You're being an eyesore. No entry for you. Day to night. You're being an eyesore. No entry for you. From day. Tonight, Aiden stands there, recruiting non-rebellious workers. For the May I ask you something? If you ask that again, I will find where you live and break your windows. Help me, please. No, brother. That's out of my knowledge. You obviously haven't thought this all through. Or are you just annoying these people on purpose? Karim of the Silver Hand. The pirate with a golden heart. I told you I remembered him. Hey Sherlock, I'm up here. Guess what I've found? A riddle, and it's about a treasure. Listen to this. What? John, you've surpassed yourself. Come on, Sherry. This is just like the old days. Sherlock and John on a pirate's treasure adventure. Are you able to help me? I... I can help you. Are you able to help me? I wish I could help you, my brother, but I know nothing. This isn't working. You might need a different tack. From day to night, Aiden stands there, recruiting non-rebellious workers. From day to night, Aiden... You're being an eyesore. No entry for you.
Market Square, beating heart of the old city. Uh, I wonder if they still sell that. Come, come, decorate your house in Oriental style. Don't miss out on my unique clothes. Can you satisfy my curiosity? No, it's the first time I've heard it. Can you satisfy my curiosity? Hmm, interesting. But I've never heard of it. You obviously haven't thought this all through. May I what ask for your assistance? These people on hmm. Interesting. But I've never heard of it. Is this familiar to you? Hmm, interesting. But I've never heard of it. Time to check your who, what and what, Sherry. Who are you asking about what and dressed as what? May I ask you something? Hmm, interesting. But I've never heard of it. Stop blocking the view. Stop blocking the view. Can you satisfy my curiosity? Hmm, interesting. But I've never heard of it. Help me, please. Nobody cares about us, so why should I care about anybody? Do so you know anything about this? You might if need you a different tag. Again, I will find where you live and break your windows. Stop blocking the view. Stop blocking the view. Is this familiar to you? Hmm, interesting. But I've never heard of it. Are you able to help me? Men like me don't like to be bothered by strangers. This isn't working. Oriental rugs you might need a, a different price. tag. My rubber. It's a good day for a purchase. Don't hurry, we can bargain. May I ask for your assistance? No. It's come, the third come. Time I've heard it. Decorate your house in Oriental style. Nice affordable clothes. Stay May I down. ask you something? No, I don't think I can help you. This isn't working. You might need a different... Could you help me? Stay away from me and from people like me too, or you'll regret it. Excuse me, just one question. That's new to me. There is nothing I can tell you. Time to check your who, what and what, Sherry. Who are you Don't asking about like what and dressed as what? Don't miss out on... Let's pick something that suits you. Don't leave. Take one more look. Could you help me? No, it's the first time I've heard it. Stop blocking the view. Stop blocking the view.
Can you satisfy my curiosity? Sorry, I have no time for your problems. <clears throat> Don't miss out on my unique clothes. May I ask you something? Oh no, I won't fall for that trick again. Oh, I am bored. Call me when you find the answer. Excuse me, just one question. What are you trying to sniff around for? I know nothing. Help me, please. <sighs> I am not interested in your stories. This isn't working. You might need to... Different tack. Nice affordable clothes. Oriental rugs at a good price. Help me, please. Oh no, I won't fall for that trick again. Stop blocking the view. Stop blocking the view. Stop blocking the view. Stop blocking the view. <laughs> Don't pass by. Well, good let's price. pick something that. Be careful with what you've taken. Stop blocking the view. Come Don't miss. Let's pick something that suits you.
Be careful with what you've taken. Sir, kind sir, might I steal your attention? I am not buying. Ah, that is the thing. You won't waste a single mangir. I am a digger, you see, and I have heard of a dig site so deep it clogs your ears. I want to be there. Why are you telling me this? I have heard of a man recruiting for such a dig. A man with a scar, such as uh, the one that you're hiding. And your boots are dirty with the deep clay I am so familiar with. Oh, I, I hope it wasn't too rude of me to point that out. You have a good eye. And you just want to dig? Dig deep and that's it? What's the catch? Are you in desperate need of money? Oh, there is no catch, sir. I won't even ask for advance pay. Just give me a shovel and I'll dig a hole like you've never seen. Huh. Is that so? Well, I have to ask you an important question first. Would you be fine working for Brits? I am all for them. Well, you say that, but can you prove it? I'll sing you a very special song. God save our gracious queen. Cut it! Or people here will make you their queen. I can also speak in limericks. Please don't. You might be a little bit weak in the head, but a natural born digger with a keen eye is what we need. Take this permission slip and go to this address. The guard will let you in and check with the professor once you're there. Stop loitering and get inside. Newcomer, talk to the professor first. He's the old fellow with Do the glasses and the plans. Do you know anything about this? I like you, friend, but I can't... I can't help you. Excuse me, just one question. I like you, friend, but I can't help you. Oh, I am bored. Call me when you find the answer. Where's the fire in your eyes? Where's the smile? I am sick and tired of seeing apathy among the new workers. Sir, believe me, I do have the spark. I want to start work straight away. It's as important to me as it is to you. Ah, that's the spirit. I'm on the verge of a great discovery. I am ready to work. Splendid. Do you know what I am working on? The ivory bats. Everyone is looking forward to the grand opening. Who told you this nonsense? Why would you contaminate history with this base desire for leisure? <laughs> we are looking for Vitus Lemonius' tomb. This is our goal, to find the artifacts of the early Roman Empire. Let's continue. I am Professor Swift. We have three rules here. Don't touch anything. Always return the tools, and don't distract me unless you find something. Sounds simple enough. Are you the only one in charge here, Mr. Swift? Yes, I am the only one, and no one else. You hear anything other than that, it's a lie. People of your kind can have difficulty understanding who's in charge. Take a minute, memorize my face, and then get to work. Oh, I will definitely take a closer look. 
to memorize my superior. I wish I could be as passionate about something as you are, Mr. Swift. You value knowledge and dedication over everything else. It's a long road, young man. A sharp eye and attention to detail are the only stepping stones along this path. You have to sacrifice everything you love for the larger prize. Exactly. So much in life is uh, superficial. I wish more people would understand. I never heard a truer word, lad. Folk will ignore what truly matters in life, and for what? Convenience. Bold words indeed. I doubt that many scientists would be willing to support their bragging with fieldwork. The academic world is full of restrictions. Our honorable professors are too afraid to dirty their hands. God forbid if they have a stain on their shirt. You can follow in my footsteps. You can start learning by returning to work. Show me what you can find. Take a shovel and dig. Don't touch anything here. Get back to work. Oil cloth. Won't fade and waterproof. Enough here to make ten sails and more. Straw dolls. Eerie, but effective for a scene recreation. Oh, I want one of these. Or two. Ah, let me warm my bones here. This reminds me of my father's room. A plan for this whole operation. This might prove useful. I'll note it down. Take a shovel and dig. Take a shovel and dig. Take a shovel and, and dig. Take a shovel and dig. Ah, 
Let me warm my bones here. Are you able to help me? I like you, friends, but I can't help you. Swift lost his temper. Swift lost his temper when... Daunting to see how deep the dig is. Did the Romans live in Amphorus? I see nothing else here. Sharpest pickaxe. <laughs> A guilty pleasure of the real archaeologist. Missing your Laura, Mr. Swift? Hey, a word about the trilogy. Right then, you literary expert. You, what was so important about these books? Or do you simply need some kindling? It's inspirational. I have a plan. Are you listening? I wish I wasn't, but I am. So, we catch a monkey, a langa, for example, then we extract some blood from it. What? Why? It will make us forever young, Sherry. Page 127 of the second book. Oh, I am so done with this. No, wait. Then how about we make a wax statue? I've stopped listening, John. Working and living by the sea. What a dream. Somehow the text remains legible. Let's see if I remember my Latin. Sickle for harvesting. The ancient Romans honored the seasons. A goddess? A mother? Someone's wife? Four statues here originally. I wonder what the three other statues look like. I see now. Mr. Swift didn't realize the significance of the statues.
You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. 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 Seems everything's in place. Now, let's see what this has to tell us. Take a shovel and dig. Take a shovel and dig. Vitus rests nearby. Beware the one who wishes to disrupt his sleep, for he is guarded by the gazes of his brother in the autumn wind. Romans live in amphoras. I see nothing else here. Do you know anything about this? I like you, friend, but I can't help you. 
Do you know anything about this? I like you, friend, but I can't help you. You obviously haven't thought this all through. Or are you just quite daunting to see how deep the dig is? your discovery, Mr. Swift. Hey, look at this! What have you found? Don't let anyone touch anything there! Eureka! I found you, my friend! of darts. Handy against rodents of all kinds. Trying to take over my research, are you? I come here to pick up my diary and I find you snooping around. Explain yourself. Mr. Swift, if that were true, I would have been on my way to the newspaper. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I didn't have a chance to introduce myself properly. Outrageous! You deceived me, sir. What is the reason for your being here? Who sent you, Mr. Holmes? Theodore Gildon's premature death brought me here. Theodore is dead? How can that be possible? I'm thinking of all the possibilities, and I'm not crossing out anyone who might have been involved. Even his elephant. The land you're excavating belongs to Mr. Gildon, does it not? Did I hear an accusation? I have nothing to hide. You can ask me whatever nonsense you've prepared as a token of my diminishing respect towards you. Very well, Mr. Swift. I appreciate your cooperation. When was the last time you saw Mr. Gildon? A couple of days ago. We discussed the site. I believe in the tomb and its secrets. Theodore's patience was stretched, however. He was already inventing new projects. It wasn't a long conversation. I suppose that his daughter will inherit everything now, along with all of the eccentricities and problems. And not forgetting Goliath. Eccentricities and problems, Mr. Holmes. One of many. Were you at the site this morning? Affirmative. This project is taking a lot of my time, as you see. I spend more time underground than on the surface. When did you learn about Theodore's death? Just now. You just told me. And you aren't surprised? Shocked? I won't tell anyone if you shed a tear or two. Weren't you partners, after all? We were. And it is a real shame. But I've seen too many deaths in my life, Mr. Holmes, for the news to truly shake me. Will you allow me to return to my research? Or are you insisting on remaining an obstacle? Oh, I haven't even started yet. What's with this box of darts? Is it for a scientific argument? A little darker than that. Rather for killing the kind of rodents that might nibble a nose or a toe in your sleep. Let's just say I have to protect myself against a larger animal, such as an elephant. Might it be enough to stop it, make it faint? If I were you, I wouldn't bank on it. You have a weakness for nostalgia, or rather, do you use it to record a list of enemies? Young man, you need to check your moral compass. 
Reading another person's diary is a sin in every culture that I can think of. But you aren't answering the question. You've already read it. Why bother? I simply record my life to keep my memory clean from misinterpretation. Letters and pages don't lie. But the writer of the text can. With this book, you attempted to plan an attack on the elephant? Your insinuations are out of place. Goliath is a frightening animal. All I wished to do was to understand the creature. As any scientist would do, I researched, analyzed, and drew conclusions. Hmm. And what conclusion did you draw? That Theodore Gilden made the animal miserable. He couldn't provide the proper environment for the beast. My interest in the subject ended there. Moving on. As far as I can tell, you're a man of the academic world, so this book about Nabe and Laura is just an empirical study? What? That nonsense? I'd prefer to lose my eyesight than read such trash. So, you know nothing about it? I know nothing. I wish I'd never heard of it in the first place, this caricature of science. Do I hear traces of envy? You're still relatively young that you might find your own Laura. Perhaps I envy, Nabe, for I cannot simply blow people up for distracting me. That's all. You happy now? Wonderful. Moving on. Moving on. What's with this intricate recruitment process? Pro-British workers charge less? As a head of this organization, I need to secure a productive environment. It's impossible to do so if there are political differences. Especially here, where the native population doesn't support our efforts to find the ancient artifacts. Decent pay can also stimulate productivity and shut down any political discord. Hadn't you thought of that? You're young. You have time to fritter and fight with everyone you meet. I don't have such a luxury. Our workers receive enough pay for what they do. So don't start a discussion you know nothing about. I'm a busy man. Your partner had a very specific attitude towards the things he treasured. Was this habitual for him? That would have been too much even for him. Don't get me wrong, he had a harsh temper. Like a true businessman, he was ready to burn his competitors to the ground. But threatening someone physically would have been something new even for him, am I correct? Absolutely. Besides, I had never seen him this angry. The fellow who received the letter must have been extremely alarmed. I've nothing to add. I'm a busy man. I'm a busy man. Have you seen this person before? The one beside Imogen Gildan? No, but he's with Imogen, so I suppose that he's a friend of hers. That girl always has her head in the clouds. I could have said Theodore was different, but that wouldn't have been entirely true. Away with the fairies, was he? That's one way of putting it. Either way, I don't know much about Imogen's life or her friends. The type of elite that pretends to be educated. Moving on. Did this plan cause a rift in your business relationship with Theodore Gilden? Nothing like that. Admittedly, we didn't share a common vision of what is more important, the past or the future, in my opinion. We can't build a future without knowing the past. So you wanted to save the tomb of Vitus here, or perhaps your control over the research? Only the knowledge that rightly belongs to humankind. Nothing less and nothing more. I've nothing to add. Remember one of the rules? It uh, seems that you didn't return a tool. Is this knife yours? Do I look like a fellow who carries a knife? I don't need it. There are plenty of uses for it on the site, and outside of it. I have other people to cut ropes for me, Mr. Holmes. Gildan's Elephant is quite an unusual addition to Cordona's fauna. What is your scientific opinion on that? No matter how much Theodore loved it, it still remained a wild animal trapped inside a stone pen. Goliath needs savannas, fields, lakes. I'm sure that Goliath did not have a plan to kill his owner to head to the savannas. What do you think? No, 
Animals don't kill in a typical sense. I can only presume that it tried to protect itself from captivity, from Theodore. It was a gilded cage that was predestined to break. Be swift. All the newspapers are sold out. Are you able to help me? Go back to work. Are you able to help me? I can't help you with that, sir. Bloodied bandages. <laughs> Too ordinary a room for a champion. There's no incentive to put in any effort. Bloodied bandages. Too ordinary a room for a champion. There's no incentive to put in any effort.
we can become pirates and show them what should be stored in here. Too ordinary a room for a champion. There's no incentive to put in any effort. Bloodied bandages. Too ordinary a room for a champion. There's no incentive to put in any effort. We can become pirates and show them what should be stored in here. Undeniably psychotropes. Not for toothache, I think. Undeniably psychotropes. A typical tea tin. I wonder what he has for biscuits. Hands off my possessions before you lose your fingers. Are you illiterate? The rules are written everywhere. Ah, Mr. Perks, the cabin boy himself. Champion, you mean. I was right. You are illiterate. I think a couple of shiners might teach you. One last chance. Who are you? I'm Sherlock Holmes, a friend of our mutual acquaintance, Miss Imogen. Look, you artichoke. Imogen has no friends. Except for me. If you must try to insult people, it's better to know the meanings of the words that you're using. You fancy you could teach a sailor to swear? Go ahead. Show me how inventive you are. 
Stand still for a moment. So, a woman wishes to become a real criminal, and smuggling is a stepping stone towards that? Is there not enough prestige in yachting? Or is it easier to compete with other fools like yourself? Everyone has a starting pistol, just shoot and run. Don't say a word. I don't know where you're getting half of this nonsense, but you're on some thin ice here that I'm willing to crack. Damn you, Paul. I'm sick of... Who's this peacock? Does he know who I am? I definitely know who you are not. You're not a dictionary reader, at least. I wanted to see how you... pals interact with each other in your natural habitat. But I'm afraid I have to interfere. I thought we were against murder. Don't... I can't miss the party. I'm coming for you. Take a rest. The snuff's ready. Not that easy. We can infer. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. I'm gonna hurt you! He's all yours now. Go for it. Don't cry, you'll live. Give him the pepper snuff. I am invincible. I couldn't miss the party. No more crime for you until next month. Can overcome the brute. I will end you. And there's no reward for risking our lives. Paul's explanation will suffice.
Your fellow mariners have a strange way of showing hospitality. They were not my friends. Are you sure? I would rather risk my neck for someone who's at least honest and thankful. Perhaps then don't enter someone's life and be so judgmental, pretending you're better than they are. Then give me your perspective and allow me to see through your eyes. What were you doing this morning, Miss Perks? Don't call me that. I'm a champion. I was sailing. The other club members told me that you missed the race this morning. Do champions not need to practice? Ugh, you've talked with them already. No, I wasn't racing. I visited the doctor after that attack on me. And then I had to honor the deal with the bandits you just took care of. I tried to tell you before, but your partners interrupted. Have you heard the news? Theodore Gilden is dead. Do you have anything to say? Well, what a shock. To me, he was an angry old ogre. Good riddance. Was it Goliath that killed him? Did it crush him? Break his bones? Come on, tell me. I want all the details. You have an unusual way of showing grief. Imogen wouldn't appreciate that. But yes, the animal could have been involved. It's poetic in a way, isn't it? It takes a beast to kill a monster. I wish I could have been that elephant. This business of yours, you should be more careful. Ruining your life at such a young age is ridiculous. I am careful. Except for you, no one has noticed where I store the smuggled goods. If the police arrive, there's no link to me. It's common storage, not exclusively mine. I'm clueless. I'm clueless. You smuggle illicit psychotropes on your yacht. Not a delivery for the hospital, I'm sure. Of course not. I've had to cut corners to earn some money. How might a person afford to pay for a yacht in an honest way? I don't know, although I'm smart. The buyers are my customers. Adults who are willing to pay for their pleasure, or weapons for jewels. Whatever they want me to deliver. Nothing criminal. Well, it's your lucky day. I'm not here because of smuggling. Have you tasted this tea yourself? I wouldn't have been a champion if I had used it. It's just a side business that keeps my career afloat. It's quite expensive to compete in yachting. Sometimes I cut corners. Such as fixing whirlpool yourself? Exactly. And sometimes I just have to pay. That's how I earn money. I don't sell slaves or take the last mangir from a poor family. What can you tell me about the elephant? He's smarter than some people here, including his owner. Although I feel he could be dangerous, no matter how much he's fed. Why is that? Have you ever seen Goliath attack anyone? Well, not exactly. But I saw it, uh, abusing some poor tree during one of its walks with Theodore. The expression on that old ninny's face was priceless. But it wasn't funny to look at. Believe me. It was frightening. Does this knife seem familiar? I didn't find it in your competitor's back, to be clear. This knife is as blunt as your humor. It's a boson's knife, but it's not mine. I wouldn't be so careless as to mislay my tools. A. Swift. Are you familiar with this name? The gentleman had business with Mr. Gildon. Likely just another strange and wrinkled fellow like old Gildon was. Perhaps this swift person has a rhino, and they wanted to see which pet was stronger. In other words, I don't know who he is. But I bet he's crazy like Theodore. I doubt that court owner has ever boasted a battle arena for that size of mammal. You have an interesting imagination. It seems as though Theodore Gildon hung a sword of Damocles over your life and career. Were these only words or something more serious? Pfft. Check my forearm. Pulled muscles and bruises. Small cuts. Nothing that you could call serious. I doubt that a man in his late fifties could wrestle you. It wasn't him. He behaved like a rat and hired brutes. His boys tried to lock my hands behind my back, but I was faster and I escaped. Was he so protective of his daughter, or was it your feminine secret that provoked him? My guess is that he was protecting his property. As he saw it, he owned Imogen, and he treated her like a piece of furniture. He didn't want his daughter to be loved by anyone. What's more painful is that Theodore didn't allow me to love his daughter. Typical. I'm not sure that your relationship with Imogen could be described as typical. Are you afraid of a woman in trousers? Now that's typical of men. I'm clueless. 
I don't know what this means. I don't know what this means. I don't know what you're suggesting. I'm clueless. Between yachts, darts, and notes from bandits, I've discovered many fascinating facts about you. But this, an installment of Nabe and Laura's adventures, why did you sully your library with this? It's a gift from Imogen. I didn't buy it. I might have turned a couple of pages, but nothing more. I swear. I will give you the benefit of the doubt, but your literary taste has put you on my blacklist. I don't know what this means. I don't know what this means. I don't know what this means. Look what I found. A box full of darts. Hey, that's mine. I confiscated it. These darts appear to be filled with something. Poison? How powerful is it? It's strychnine. Enough to instantly kill a small rodent. I haven't tried it on a human. Yet. I hope you know what you're doing. Could it immobilize a larger animal, say, an elephant? I've never tried, but I have wondered. A charming picture. I've heard that champions do often pose with their trophies. Cheeky. It is a lovely trophy, though. I'm sure you will agree. What is it that you like most about her? Her naivety? Her father's money? A somewhat difficult choice. Especially now that her father is out of the equation. I'm clueless. Imogen doesn't strike me as an industrious young lady, so I find it strange that she was busy packing up all her belongings when Mr. Gildon died. That's some um, favourable wind in your sails, isn't it? Is it so suspicious that a couple might embark on a trip? I wanted to thank her, so we planned to go travelling. A Theodore-free place, without elephants. The timing of it is suspicious, however. Your lady friend becomes an orphan and heir, and there's a planned trip directly afterwards. An improvised romantic dinner will never please a spoiled girl. A planned voyage might. It's not spur of the moment. Just be quick! Might fall an elephant.
Stop shirking. Get dressed properly and come inside. Stop, Lloyd. This fabric will work. Mrs. Nini seemed to know her sewing inside out. Uh, I bet she missed us. I hope Miss Nini won't misunderstand me. Good day, madam. I've come to you with a special requirement. The tailors on the street can't help me, I'm afraid. Could you make a doll for me? Oh, Signor Holmes. You taught the police how to do their job, and they found the thief. Of course I will help you. But what sort of doll? A child's doll, such as my great niece might play with? Um, a little larger than your typical doll. Signore, I don't understand. Boy, girl, animal, and what color? Animal, um, a passionate, perhaps amorous animal. Ah, oh, Signore, you talk in riddles. I am an old lady who's seen it all. Tell me what you need. I need a life-size elephant. I think Mrs. Nini outdid herself with this one. Is that a tail? That's a trunk, John, but I must agree with you that it's a masterpiece. Well, let's not waste any time. game is on. So, what's the plan? I hope it all doesn't go horribly wrong. 
We know that the elephant is seeking a female. We can arrange that. A doll with the appropriate scent might do miracles. So you're a marriage broker? Well, I suppose that makes me a groomsman. Oh, she is a bit breezy, I must say. Well, Goliath is eager for a single female elephant in his area. It should be just enough for his taste. You'll need to trust me. Are we ready? I can't stand the tension. We're ready. Let's call the elephant. How could anyone resist? I knew a lady once who said just that. Too bad I'm not an elephant. Take your time, Sherry. That deserves a slap, and then a kiss. And here's our lovesick friend. What is the meaning of this? Why are you bringing it here? I won't allow you to leave it. I assure you that it is only a temporary measure. It won't be long until the elephant is gone, I promise you. It injured itself while running through the forest. There's something in the needle. There's something in the needle. A feathered fletching. This might be promising. Peaceful and compliant, almost a gentleman. The left tusk is larger and more worn. You're a left tusked elephant.
Did it feel good killing Theodore Gildon after the humiliation and threats? What? I thought you were blaming Goliath for that. No, no, I think you killed Theodore Gildon. Goliath is, unfortunately, a victim of circumstance. I'm far better than to kill Gildon. Believe me. You see, I managed to capture the elephant. Goliath had a dart stuck in his hide, similar to the ones that you used to kill rodents. My guess is that you used Goliath. A dart can kill a mouse or human, but for an elephant it's not enough. Strychnine is a powerful stimulant and convulsant. Once the drug was in the bloodstream, Goliath became extremely agitated and so blinded by the flow of energy that he killed his owner. And my dart is responsible for that. I'd rather use my hands. Yes, there would have been fewer variables, but after the attack on you, your condition didn't allow for a direct confrontation. So, you used what you had. That's not what happened. Anyone might have the same set of darts as I do. They're not expensive. But not everyone knew Theodore and had access to his property. You were at the crime scene at the precise moment when Gildan died. I was not. I was visiting the doctor after the attack on me. Ah, of course, where no one saw you. That's an inconvenience. But in any case, the person who was there met the rage of the elephant. One was struck by the gate with such impact that they were thrown into the shed. The knife fell out. The bruises on your elbow matched the contour of the hole in the shed. But I told you where my bruises came from. And I heard you, but you didn't catch my words. A bosun's knife was found there, a very specific tool commonly used in your field. That's only your assumption. I... I was never there. I mean, I was, but not when this happened. I can understand why you killed Mr. Gildon. He saw you with his daughter. He checked up on you, yachtsman, smuggler, and a woman. He went so far as to hire some thugs to attack you. Theodore knew your weakness, your career. He forced you into a corner. You're a survivor. You were prepared for the worst, but Theodore surpassed even your worst-case scenario. So you responded accordingly. I've earned everything myself. Every victory, every trophy, every manga. I achieved all of it without murder. I don't need to kill in order to win. And you weren't afraid that he would reveal your secret to the owner of the yacht club or your competitors? I can control my fear. Trust me, I wouldn't have become a professional athlete otherwise. I revealed many truths and lies concerning Gildan. One banal fact is that he was a bitter and angry man who acted according to his own desires and impulses. Such people are dangerous, they are unpredictable, and value their own comfort more than anything and anyone. The same as you, Paul. Are you out of your mind? You're a gambler, smuggler, and actor. You indulge your self-importance. Such egocentricity and impulsivity is frightening. I won't allow you to play with someone else's life. You are under arrest. Wait. At least tell Imogen. Tell her where I am. I think she deserves a space without you. I heard you can gamble on racing in prison, only it's rat racing. No yachts. Goodbye, Paul. Why did you pick my Paul? Out of all the people on this island. Just when I needed someone I could rely on. Believe me, I saved you. I found the true murderer. Would you really choose to live with the person who took your father's life? You took away the pillar I was relying on. Paul was my only hope. You've destroyed it. It was Paul who destroyed it, not me. I was merely the fact checker who discovered the real culprit. And now about that elephant. Oh yes, Goliath. You did nothing about it. I had to deal with it. Fortunately, there was a real man wanting to help me. He agreed to buy Goliath and relocate him to his property. I suppose I must congratulate you. I'd rather you leave. But first, here are my father's belongings. Some of them have information about your mother. Take them and leave me be. I appreciate it, Miss Gildon. I assure you, I only wanted to find the true perpetrator. Perhaps. Or perhaps you found a convenient scapegoat. Goodbye. I truly hope you meet more honest people in the future. Take care.
My mother always wore this around her neck until one day it disappeared. I was wondering where it went. She said it was a birthday present from a good friend. I just had another glimpse of a memory, John. It's fuzzy, but I'm sure it happens somewhere in the manor. Finally, moving forward. Shall we go? <laughs> <laughs> 